but one thing i want to what i, what I really want to focus on uh, is that we should all have a clear sense of destination clear sense of where we are going or where we want to be you understand so to so say might not even be where you are going but where you want to be where you want to end up a clear sense of where you are going i was talking with a friend of mine who does uber um or boat you know uber is kind of doing bad in nigeria so people call uber boats now he does both and um he was telling me that oh this job is really hard i don't like it really really hard really gruesome job i'm not making a lot of money i spend a lot of money on fixing the car and stuff like that and i asked him what do you want to be doing if you're not driving this car wait what what do you see yourself doing and said, I don't know, just a good job, working in an office, you know, just getting enough money. I said, that's not a job. That's not a job description. You understand? It's not clear. It's fuzzy. There are many offices. Which one? In what capacity? Where is it? You understand? Where do you see yourself? And I said, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. He just knows he doesn't like where he is. And he said, the fact that I asked him that question is funny because someone entered his his car some days ago said the man was a very influential looking man and the man came to abuja for business recruiting and from talking with him said ah, sir, um, young man can you do this he said no can you do this he said no and he asked him can you fit into any of these seven roles he said no and the man said wow i really like you and i'm here to recruit and i want to recruit you i'm here from ECOWAS. that way the guy said i'm here from ECOWAS." I said, I just really, but you don't fit into any of these things. And the guy left. But the truth is that because my friend didn't have a clear sense of where he wanted to be, he was too focused about how much he didn't like driving. That was it. I don't like driving. I don't like this Uber. I'm not making enough money. But he wasn't doing, he wasn't thinking of where he wanted to be. So he wasn't equipping himself for anywhere. You understand? Maybe if he had equipped himself for somewhere, and someone had said, hey, can you do this? Say, yeah, I can do this. So, say, okay, that's cool. Then he's ready when the opportunity comes. We had no clear sense of direction or destination. Not even direction, it's destination. So, one of the biggest questions I want us to ask ourselves very early on, which I realize a lot of people have not answered, and you need to answer if you're part of this mentoring program, is, do you want to be an employee or do you want to be an entrepreneur? You must make that up, up, up your mind about which path you want to walk in. Do you want to be an employee or be an entrepreneur? I realize a lot of people are entrepreneurs because they didn't get jobs as employees. So they're an entrepreneur with one foot in. And they say, ah, if someone offered me a good job, I'm dropping this business. I'm going to go and work. Oh. Do you understand? You cannot do it that way. You have to be an entrepreneur. Because you know that is the path you want to take. And when someone comes to convince you, they can't dissuade you of that path. Come rain, come shine. When I started out 17 years ago, I made up my mind. I am a terrible employee. employee. I knew it. If you employ me, you will lose money as an employee. Number one, I'll get there late. Number two, I'll get distracted at work. I'm not, I, I, I'm not that kind of person that you can restrict to 9 to 5. No. I'm not that person that can tell Tola, this is your desk. Work only here. You, get, you, you won't get anything from me. I, will be, I won't be creative. I'm not the kind of person that you can say, stay in this office, please. No more no, no talking, no talking. You guys focus on your work. I would have taken enough queries. You understand? So I knew employee life is not for me. I'm highly opinionated very opinionated i'll tell you that that's the truth i'm very opinionated although i think a lot about my opinions before i make them but i'm opinionated about what i want to do so when a boss is telling me "Eh, no 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 you have to do it this way it's very very hard for me to take it if i don't agree so i knew look i need to walk my own path though so i decided very long ago that look i want to be an entrepreneur so you know what happens when things are hard for me in business which gets hard 
when finances are low which it gets low i will never lie to you guys finances get low for me you'll be you'll be shocked how low it gets but when it gets low it's never an option that okay tola men go and look for a job things are so hard right now no it's never i never consider it because i've committed to this path that is my path do you understand never look with the kind of reputation i've built with the kind of portfolio i've built there are a lot of places I can walk into, as in walk into and ask for a job as art director or to be in charge of their design or whatever, and they would give me that job. They will. No matter where it is. In Nigeria, there are a lot of places I can walk into. Lots of places I can walk into. Not with the portfolio I've built, not with the reputation I've built, not with the content I've put out. They'll be more than happy. They will pay me. But it's never an option. I'm never broken up to say, okay, well, let's dust off that CV and go and look for a job. No. So when I'm broke and things are hard, the only option I have is to make business better. So business has to get better. So the only solution I have is re-strategize in business. What are you doing wrong? How's your communication with clients? How are you positioning yourself? It's never a, oh, my business is hard, though. Man, I wish someone just call me, just offer me a job. Then you won't make any headway. Because it always gets hard. Anything you look at right now that is good started off from hard. If you look at any beautiful building right now, beautiful building, residential house, if you look at any mansion, that mansion was once a dirty site. Once a dirty site. With weeds and grass and all that. Then it went to the level of being dirty with construction workers and cement and sand and nails and wood lying everywhere. I, I know about construction very well because I, I, I studied architecture. I did it for a while. If you go to a construction site of some places that are mansions now, if you know when, when, they, when they were building it, it was dirty. You will see foot packs on the floor, pure water on the floor. People have defecated there. Some people have urinated there. You know, you know the kind of people staying there are bricklayers, some of them smoking weed in that very place. Dirty environment. But go to that place a year later, you see a mansion. A mansion, clean, nice, speak and span. But the thing is that if the person that was building that mansion in the construction stage said, ah, this place is too dirty, you ah. Dirty, see these dirty people staying there, cement, sand, gravel, nails, wood all over the floor. Human waste, pure water all over the place. You know what? I'm abandoning this six bedroom mansion I'm building. Let me go and rent a ready, a readily prepared one bedroom apartment so I don't have to go through dirt. Then you're going to stay in a one bedroom apartment. You've mortgaged. A future of a mansion for something that will end up being too small for you when you get married you have children that one bedroom now becomes like hell because you couldn't stand when the mansion was at its developmental stage and that's what that's the mistake a lot of people make when things are hard for them in business right now clients are not coming things are very hard they are not making a lot of money and just thinking, oh man, this business is not working. Let me just go and take a job at this, at this agency that is calling me right now. They're going to pay me um, hundred thousand per month. You mortgage your business that can get you a hundred thousand in a minute to get a job that pays you a hundred thousand per month, just because you couldn't stand the dirty time. And that dirt time would come. That hard time has to be there. So I want us to think about it. One thing I want you to know is that if you commit to say you want to be an employee, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I don't know why people are spreading this um, perception that entrepreneur, that being an entrepreneur is like being in business heaven. That if, if you're an entrepreneur, you've made it in life. That's, that's not true. You can be an employee too and be very fulfilled. You just need to choose. So when I ask people, do you want to be an employee or want to run a company? They feel like if seeing an employee means that they are settling for less. No. 
The only thing is that if you want to be an employee, you know why you want to be an employee. I know a lot of people that are employees and they're doing very well. I tell people about Jonathan Ive, who is the chief creative officer um, at um, Apple. I don't know if he's still there, but he was there for a long time. Very influential designer. Didn't have a company of his own. Worked as head designer at Apple. Doing much better than a lot of entrepreneurs. Has more influence than a lot of entrepreneurs. I think he was even given an award by the Queen of England. When was that? Because an English guy. Employee. Made his mark as an employee. So who says being an employee is a bad thing? It's not. But just think of what works for you. Do you like being part of a company that is doing something? Or do you want to be the one running the company that is doing something? One sounds better, but it doesn't have to be. Do you understand? You can still make a lot of influence just being part of a company. But you need to be committed to it. And by all means, you can be an employee with a vision of wanting, wanting to work as an entrepreneur. So being an employee is just a step towards being an entrepreneur. Those are two things. So you can be an employee in two ways. You can be an employee because that is the path you want to take for the rest of your life. Or you can be an employee because it's a springboard towards being an entrepreneur. The expectations are different. If you want to be an employee because that is the path you want to take in your career, you want to be part of a team. I'll give you a tip. The mistake a lot of people make when they are going into a company and they ask them, how much should we offer you? How much, what is your salary expectation? The mistake a lot of employees make that make them feel like being an employee is hell. The mistake they make, this is the one mistake they make. When they ask you, what are your expectations? They tell them how much they want to be making now. That is a grave mistake. When people ask you, how much are your salary expectations in a job interview? Always tell them how much you want to be making in three years' time. Not now. So if now you want to be making 100,000, think about it. Just how much do I want to make? I'm making 400,000. Tell them 400,000. Do you know why? I'll tell you why. Because once you get into a job, one of the hardest things to get is a raise. One of the hardest things, once you get a job as an employee, once you get that job, the hardest thing to get is a raise. It's just like going into university for a course. And they'll tell you, just enter. When you enter, you can change. 90% of people that do that mentality never change. They never get to change. Because it's harder to change while you're inside than to go back and do your jam and change it. The same thing with marriage. When people get married, I say, once you marry him, you, you will change. It's a lie. He won't change. So you better make sure that he's the person you want him to be before you marry him, in terms of character, not in terms of financial capacity. You understand? The same thing with employees. People enter and they say, let's just, marry, let's just manage this salary. By December, I'll ask them to increase. They will not increase. Most employers do not increase before three years. So you better be asking for what's comfortable for you within that three years. So that by the time you get to three years, you ask for a raise, they will probably give you. But a lot of people ask for, they think that they can just come next year and ask for, for a raise. It won't happen. They are willing to kick you out and give you a raise. Self. So ask for that, what you want to be earning in three years' time. If you want to be an employee for the rest of your life. That's not bad. But if you want to be an employee as a springboard to financing your entrepreneurial journey, then you don't have to ask for what you'll be earning in three years. No. Because most probably you won't be there in three years. Do you understand? There are two things you need to do if you want to be an em employee that is on an entrepreneurial journey, that wants to use as, as a springboard to finance your entrepreneurial journey. Number one, before you take that job, you must have a timeline and say look I must stay in this job for more than two years and give yourself a specific date say by August 5th 2023 I should have left this job that's the day I'm quitting this job you must say it 
So at the time of which you are getting your employment, you have the date for which you are leaving the job. You must have that in your mind. That's how a lot of people get stuck because they don't have it in their mind when they are leaving, when they are getting in. So if you want to use employment as a springboard to being an entrepreneur, then you must have a timeline. I say, by this time I'm leaving. You must. And you must have a plan too. You must have a plan. Remember, you are not asking for what you are you what will make you a millionaire. You're asking for what they can pay you to help you to survive, number one, and ask you for what they can pay you to help you to save. Those are the two things that are important to you. Survival and saving. So enough. So you're not thinking of your salary buying you a car. No. I think your survival being able to house you, feed you, clothe you, and you can have something to save towards you establishing your business. And when I say establishing your business, I don't mean establishing your business where you're well by because you're thinking how much can you save to establish. I'm not saying you're saving money to go and rent an office, no. Because you probably can't save that much money to go and rent an office. You're not saying you're saving money to hire people, no. You're saving enough money for you to start so that when you start your business and clients do not come, you still have some resources to live on while you market yourself as a business. That's what you are saving towards. You understand? And nothing you might be using employment as, as a springboard to get you to the, where you want to be, is when you are using employment as a place of networking with people and getting them to know who you are and what you can do. So that when you leave, they would, even when they want to do work, they say, ah, there's a guy that used to work here. Man, the guy was good at animation. I think you should call him. They are the ones that will bring you your first client. You understand? They will bring you your client. So you are using it as a medium of networking. Because one of the difficult things about being an entrepreneur is networking. Meeting people. Talking with them. The funny thing is being in an office allows you to do that. When you are an employee. It allows you to meet people, show them your work, they will see what you do, you know that kind of thing. But people in the office don't take advantage of that because they don't have entrepreneurial minds. And entrepreneurs don't meet people because they are too busy trying to build the business. So, if you are someone that has such a focus whereby you want to work for a while and get to meet people and interact and show them who you are and what you can do so that when you leave, they can always refer themselves or people to you, then you can use that. But the most important thing I want to let you know today is have a clear sense of what you want to do, what path you want to take. And don't be afraid because of hard times. Hard times will come, but they don't last. You understand? Hard times will come, but they don't last. You must stay strong as much as possible. You must stay strong as much as possible. Stay focused. You are not alone when it comes to things being hard. You understand? You are not alone. Everybody has gone through it. Everybody, some people are going through it right now. But you will come out of it as long as you have a vision. Just like that, my friend that was driving Uber. Uber. Somebody will enter your car that is just waiting for you to be prepared. Would you be prepared when that person enters your car? Would you be prepared when that person sends you an email? Would you be, be, be prepared when that person calls your number? Would you be prepared when that WhatsApp message comes? You, you can only be prepared if you are focused. So I just thought to share that with you guys. Sorry, it has taken quite like 20 something minutes now, but take your time to listen to it as much as possible. All right, guys, have a great weekend.